Reflecting back 30 years ago to when we first came here is a very refreshing point, one that I refer back to often. We came here with the blessings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe as his emissaries to fulfill his vision and goal for the entire world. That was very important, it was a tall order, but yet when we arrived here, the canvas was clean. We did not have any preconceived idea what we needed to do. We just had the mission of relating and sharing with every Jew the beauty of Judaism and how we would do that, what programs we would do, we did not know. I remember so clearly when we first arrived uh, in 1985 um, with the big famous snowstorm. Um, we felt at home. San Antonio was greeting us with snow. And um, we were so inspired and so um, looking forward to getting to meet people in the community. And we had just received a, a personal blessing from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, uh, sending us on our way to reach and touch the lives of our fellow Jews. Slowly but surely, it started to grow. It was really this one by one, one by one uh, approach that slowly built up into uh, a group, a community. Started uh, programming out of a, of a house that many, many people remember with big white pillars. Growing up in the Chabad house was quite exciting. There was always something going on. We never needed a babysitter. The programs were just in our living room or in our dining room. We loved the energy and the happiness and the spirit. We had like 100 kids daily and two months out of the summer in our house, like using our bathrooms, and we loved it. We couldn't imagine life any other way. Personally, what I internalized as a child was the dedication, the 24-7 life that my parents lived for the individuals in the community and the community at large, and the love for what they were doing. I mean, they lived in it. It was the Chabad house. So upstairs, they had their little bedrooms down here. We had dinners over there. The old kitchen, my God, I can't tell you how many meals were cooked, how many people got served in this incredible little kitchen. This wasn't just for fun, which we thought it was a blast, and it wasn't a career, and it wasn't, it was about the spark that every Jew had that we were there for to ignite and to touch. I was very impressed with him and Rifki and what their goals were for San Antonio. And I thought, gosh, why are they sending this poor boy here? Because this is a tough town to crack. But I was wrong. He's done exceedingly well. And San Antonio Jewish community is the better off for him. I remember very vividly the first time I read, met Rabbi Block. I was president of the Jewish Federation. And this brash young rabbi walks in and introduces himself to me. I had no idea who he was. I had no idea what Chabad was or what they were going to do in San Antonio. But I knew he was full of a lot of energy, uh, a lot of commitment. And it's been an interesting process watching what has happened the last 30 years. We moved here with a six-month-old child. And when she got old enough for preschool, we wanted something for her that would embrace both the quality of, of education in general and instill all the love and all the flavors and tastes and sounds and the joys of Judaism. That was our goal then and is still our goal today. Amazing what they just repeat and what they tell you and how much they learned and just that, that special place inside their, their soul that they get to open up. When she graduated from Gangani Preschool last year, I was just beaming inside because for me, I knew that her Jewish education was only just beginning. And now we have the beauty of the Torah Academy, which Chabad, along with Red Fay, has been completely involved. And we have the blessing of having 
Rabbi Maris teach there and lead the Judaics program. I really can say that Rabbi Block's encouragement and Rifki's encouragement and the um, tremendous sense of can do was a real boost. And today we have a very beautiful school that we're proud of and is continuing to grow. One goal that we've certainly shared is uh, Jewish education. TASA is just one example of many over the years that has given us both a sense of working together and succeeding together. Camp Gan Israel is another one of our signature programs and it started around 28 years ago uh, with just a few campers. I first met Rabbi Block and Rivki um, when I was a kid. I was a camper at Camp Gan Izzy. I just remember it being a really loving, lovely place. It's an opportunity to give the children an incredible time of fun, sports, activities, and a loving and nurturing atmosphere. And to see it grow again has been very gratifying and become part of the fabric of the San Antonio Jewish community. Of course, there's the famous and beloved Youth Zone program that the Teldons are also engaged in. The Torah team group that Rabbi Maris does so ably and so uh, lovingly with those kids, um, giving them an opportunity to touch base with uh, issues that are concerning to them and drawing on the wisdom of the Torah, and they love that class. There's um, a new program by the Teldons uh, called YJSA, the Young Jewish Professionals. Every month, between 30 and 40 of them are gathering together in Rabbi and Mrs. Teldon's home for uh, an incredible Shabbat experience. The first big program that we did together was Hanukkah on the River. And that first year, 1998, we had 40 kids, and we came back and we were so excited, at least I was so excited, that was until Rabbi Block said, well, for next year, we're gonna go for double. And over the years, it's matured and grown till uh, what it is today, uh, a very uh, large and well-known program in San Antonio. And we're very proud to have been part of that from the very beginning. One of the very exciting programs that go on here is a program called the Sunshine Club. It is so uh, inspiring to see our seniors gathering around the tables for lunch and for a special activity and the sparkle that is in their eyes and the warmth and the smiles that they share with each other. It's at least 25 years that we consistently have a celebration, the monthly Rosh Chodesh. That Rifki cooks for and plans for and then teaches. It's really inspiring. One of the most important areas of our work is teaching Torah and sharing the wisdom and the beauty and the relevance and meaning of our rich heritage and tradition to our fellow Jews. I've taken many, many courses over the last number of years. The amount of uh, sophistication, the amount of learning that this brand of Judaism comes with is, is pretty remarkable. They manage to connect ancient rationale and connect it to modern day living. One of the, the most meaningful moments of the 30 years was two o'clock in the morning in March when we were about to pour the foundation for this building. I had a stone, a brick, of the old Chabad Center, and as they were pouring the concrete, I dropped the brick into the concrete as a symbol of continuity, that we were taking the warmth and the love of that building and the years and years of Shabbat dinners and people sleeping over and celebrations. We were going to carry it over into the new building. We set a little lachayim and dropped a little vodka into the, uh, into the uh, concrete. When we were thinking about doing the mikvah, Rifki was right there 
at every step of the way, you know, supporting and coming to every single meeting and helping with all the choices of the tiles and the colors. And now together running the mikvah, we take turns, you know, different nights. Much of my life and experience with them is almost from a familial brother and sister. I mean, I consider heartfelt sister to me, absolutely. The two of them are living examples of the love that they see and have found in Judaism. They are two of the most giving, wonderful, sweet people. I think both of them are so committed uh, to their faith, to their family, and to their community. And it's by that great example that it just, um, just rubs off on you. It's a very rare combination to have such wisdom, knowledge, and insight into the Torah, into psychology, and at the same time be someone who's so down to earth and caring. I remember spending many, many wonderful Shabbases at the Block home on Craig Place and also learning with Rabbi Block. And from there, the relationship grew as Chabad grew. And my father was a photographer and he helped photograph a lot of Chabad events. And then when he passed in 1990, I kind of picked up the camera and have continued that tradition. I feel very fortunate to, to have Rifki as my role model. You know, somebody that I'm always able to look up to and go to for advice, and she always has the right <laughs> guidance and answer. Rifki is uh, outgoing and, and embracing and, 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 uh, with open home, open heart. I have great admiration and respect for Rabbi Block. Uh, he uh, manages very artfully and very sensitively to uh, relate to uh, rabbis and cantors of other Jewish expressions with uh, respect, with, with uh, Benchlikite. Every time I get together with him for lunch or coffee or, or something, he imparts wisdom. He imparts a building block to me as an ethical, uh, faithful human being. I found him to be very warm and very open to working with the larger community, very supportive of the Jewish Federation, and the kind of partner that any colleague in the Jewish community would want, someone who whose work is for the greater good of the Jewish people. He's a man of many talents. Uh, he has a great sense of humor. Um, he is uh, somebody who has a deep faith and is willing to share that. It's not just a career. He, he's come to San Antonio and he's a person of multi-talents. He's creative, he's energetic, he's devoted, he's dedicated, and he could be in General Motors, he could be anywhere that he wants to be, but he's come here to serve God. Rabbi Block has a beautiful way of balancing community service, in a sense, with family life. That, for me, is inspirational. You begin to see how dedicated they are. And you begin to see that they walk their talk. We all Russian Jews, when we came here to America, we came from an agnostic country. Religion was forbidden for us. So this was a total new experience in a very positive way. And coming to Chabad and feeling their welcomes and their warmth here always made us feel great. Comfortable, I guess is the best word. It's non-judgmental. It's all about learning and growing and um, and being really being ex excited about your Judaism. Before you know it, you're involved and you're, you're eager to help and, um, and you're enthusiastic. I find it to be very open and engaging and welcoming and embracing every Jew wherever they are. They live it every minute of every day. They always have a smile on their face. They're always welcoming. They're always happy. They're helping you to be happy. Over the years, on a personal level, I have really benefited a great deal from Rabbi Block and Rifki, but specifically Rabbi Block in my relationship with him. His 
sage advice, his keen ability to really understand. Uh, as an only child, I have no brothers and sisters. So if I had to say there was anyone I can honestly say that I have learned more about the Torah, its traditions, the meaning and significance behind the mitzvot, being here in San Antonio than I have learned in all my years in the yeshiva. Along the way, we have personally gained so much from extending our personal family from these relationships. We're so fortunate to have been able to raise our family and our children here in such a special community. And now, I feel as if we're just beginning, again, uh, building on the foundation of the past 30 years. And we look forward to continuing with God's blessing for many more years. Mm -hmm.